James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, August the 16th, Ooh. 2014. Yes, summer is rapid, rapidly fleeing from us. Boy, terrible. Before you know it, uh, actually the... Uh, the decorations over at the St. Joseph's, where they have the St. Joseph's Italian Festival for Labor Day weekend is already up. When is Labor Day weekend? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's when, it's right before Early Labor Day. September? It's or? the weekend before Labor Day, which falls on a Monday. Oh, you mean what date? What date? Early September or what? Like, you know, the 4th or something? What? I don't know. Oh man, I'm, 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 I'll have to consult. I'm tired. Calendar. I'm wiped out from from yesterday. I'll have to consult the calendar. You better have to. You have to consult the calendar. Yeah. Otherwise known as the calendar. Yeah. Well, it definitely has been a turbulent week, but let me get the formalities over with. First of all, welcome to Uncensored, Hard Hitting Truth. I am your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life Twenty One. And we are coming to you live and recorded by the time you get around to watch the show from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And uh, the weathermen said it was going to be all, oh, it was going to be really nice and cooler and comfortable. Yeah, because they stay in the studio that's central air conditioned. It's hot and humid out. Humidity has been high. And, you know, they, and they tell people, oh, you could shut your air conditioners off and open the windows. Bullshit. I shut it off yesterday, but... Bullshit. Today. No, it's not. Last night, okay, it was like uh, 70 to 60 overnight, but the humidity was high. You know, it always feels warmer in the house. So the weather people, they're full of crap. And they're very inaccurate. But anyway, I will formally pipe aboard my... Uh, illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. Yes, you can Google it. It should come up. With my authentic bosun's whistle. Arr, arr. Welcome aboard. Matey, welcome aboard our Uncensored, Hard-Hitting Truth Starship Newsletter Censored. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Okay, fine. Good. Fine. Now, now that I got that over with. Yep. And we're both introduced, and people know who the hell we are. Let me commence with... Uh, my little uh, thing that I do here, my little monologue, but I don't have much to say, but, uh, but what I do have to say, uh, oh, before I say it, I want to say something else. Um, me, myself, and, uh, I. And, and Reverend Dr. Bill, me, myself, and we I. were discussing right before the show began uh, about um, how many more people of color have to suffer and die before America realizes, before America wakes up and realizes that this fascist police state we live in now, uh, which is, which is uh, totally uh, supported by the uh, Republicans in Washington, are uh, 
getting out of hand. They've gone too far. They're obviously racist, just like any other Republican. And uh, it's getting, it's really getting out of hand. I mean, what's next? All right, first, now, now, first we have unarmed uh, people being uh, beaten or beaten to death or shot to death. Blacks, African Americans. Uh, but it could happen. It, uh, cops beat a homeless man to death. Uh, cops uh, shot an elderly man uh, uh, who was a World War II veteran that refused to go to the hospital and he didn't, he didn't cooperate with the police and they shot him unarmed again. A white guy, but unarmed. You know, and the list goes on and on and on and on. You know, uh, whether it be beating up the homeless or shooting this poor young man unarmed in cold blood like they said in the Wild West. You know, well, when night. is it going to end? Next they're going to shoot people for not liking their face. Oh, that person, I don't know, I don't like the way that person looks. Bang! I mean... Last night I saw a video on Facebook. St. Petersburg, Florida, I believe. Oh. Florida is going nuts, of course, against the homeless. Oh. But they ripped up all of their tents and all of this crap. I, all, uh, Gary No posted it. Yes. And I, I reposted so it did I. on my groups. And it shows the police with knives uh, tearing up and slicing apart the tents of the homeless. Gee, I guess the tent, a tent, is is w much too luxurious for a homeless person. Mm. I guess I guess our government, our system, especially the red states, feel that a tent is just too much luxury for the homeless. Oh yes, yes. Well, a refrigerator is. You heard that, idiot. Uh, Michelle Bachman said... No, some other stupid uh, uh, well, uh, representative. Well, Michelle Bachman says uh, well, the, her the, too. The, the poor should not have air conditioning. Or televisions. They're not worthy of it or something yeah. like that. She doesn't realize that things have changed. And that which was a luxury years ago is now a necessity. These things that they're uh, nitpicking about have these are inventions that have been around for many decades. So, you know, uh, uh, it's nothing new at all, and it's not a luxury. And, 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 and furthermore, uh, they don't mention something that's, in my opinion, a million times worse than a poor person having refrigeration, cable TV, and air conditioner, uh, and whatever, a vacuum cleaner. What's way worse is a rich person or a corporation getting uh, 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 billions, multi-billions every year in subsidies, in, in, in welfare for the rich. That's okay. Well, that, that's light years worse than the poor having air conditioning and, and a refrigerator and cable. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. But that, yeah, but that's okay. Because the rich aren't lazy, you know. Well, they're 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 definitely the biggest hypocrites in creation, especially particularly the right wing. You know, uh, rich. I'm not talking about some liberal celebrities that are rich and are are are, are um, progressive. I'm talking about the, cons the greedy conservative rich. They're hypocrites. So they're constantly uh, speaking with their foot in, in their mouths. I mean. Uh, Rush Limbaugh is, is was trivializing the death of uh, of Robin Williams by by saying that he died because he's a liberal, or, but he just like kind of like trivialized it, you know, just opened his mouth. As long big as mouth. it fits into his stupid political whatever, he uses it. Yeah, but the, but you getting know? back to the police state, you know, uh, it's getting way out of hand, and mm -hmm. and, and, and it's going to get to the point where. You know the old saying, uh, when is an animal most dangerous? When, you, when it's cornered and it has absolutely nothing to lose. The people can only take so much, man. Well, you, somebody put up a video the other day and I asked the, uh, uh, the person, the, the cops in the video, of course, went after the, the person Oh, who said something. Oh, wait a minute. The, is that the one where the, where the police officer slapped the woman for no, no reason no, in the no, face? No, 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 no. Dragged oh, the you? guy out of the car. Oh, you know. The you. guy who said he didn't do anything illegal. So, 
as the uh, video progressed and etc., what came out of it was that you can be arrested for saying something that the police do not like. Uh, like a snide remark. Don't have to be snide. It can be, I'm not guilty. I didn't do anything. You see. So you have to be like, like, like a robot. You have to speak only when spoken to. You have to just do what they say. Yeah. Otherwise, you're resisting arrest. Okay? And you can resist arrest by saying something or doing something. Right. Well, after they That's read, the after they, um, they make the bogus arrest and yeah. they handcuff you and they read you, read you your rights, ha ha, sarcasm. If they read you your rights. If they read, read you your rights. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going off to get booked in, in, in the pokey there in the Hooskow, whatever, in the police station, of course, you can, you know, you can, if you want, you can say comments like, you know, uh, we live in a fascist uh, uh, country, this country is fascist, this country, I mean, you can say what you want, because you're being arrested. But, uh... Who's going to listen? They probably won't. In the won't. police station. They, pro they probably won't. Of course. You know, it's like, um... It's open season on the citizens of the United States. Uh -huh. Open season. Yeah. You know, well, I would like to um, have a moment of um, silence uh, for the uh, untimely, very shocking uh, uh, death of Robin Williams. I was very shocked that a man with so much life and so much energy uh, would have, um, is dead even though I, he committed suicide and uh, I had no idea because I did not see the interviews of him by I, I think Barbara Walters, Larry King, you know, where he mentioned his substance abuse and depression. I, I, I had no idea. I only knew the Robin Williams when he was on in movies and talk shows and everything. I, don't, I only remember that part. But uh, it's definitely uh, depression and it is something to be taken seriously, not lightly. And um, you know, I, he was a favorite of mine, so I, I, I want to have. A, oh, go ahead. Before you do your moment of silence, he was on an antidepressant, and there is your culprit: the suicidal ideation. Is that they cause you to commit suicide? But is that a little similar to uh, Zola, the theory that some of those Rosac. kids that shot up a, shot true. up a school? Exactly. Were, they were all on drugs. They were all on, on prescription. Psych drugs. Prescription psychiatric medications. Correct. And so was he. Well, gotta love that big pharma pharmaceutical hey. industry. Oh yeah, sarcasm, of course. Gotta love. Uh, I hit myself in the head with the shillelagh. Got a lot of big you pharma. You have to explain that to Republicans. They, they, they don't get sarcasm. Okay? No, I, they don't get much of anything, really. Yeah. The only thing they get is when you wave a lot of money in front of their nose. Ooh. You know, but anyway, moment of silence, uh, because he was, I did take it very badly. He was a favorite of mine. So mm -hmm. he was a very nice person, humanitarian-wise, you know, to people. He, he was very good to people. He had compassion. He, had, he was a progressive, you know, uh, um, just like uh, James Garner was. You know, so another great guy. All right, moment of silence for Robin Williams. Okay. Now, oh, I'd like to say hello, greetings to my very uh, close, near, dear friend, Miho in Osaka, Japan. She is now, uh, I, she might be on vacation, she is visiting uh, uh, Kyoto, or is it Kyoto? Coyote? 
Kyoto is good. K Y O T O. K Y. Yes, Kyoto is. The Kyoto K K O T Treaty Wiley? that we did not sign. The I'm United not, States. I'm not familiar with that. Well, um, she showed me some, you know, ancient uh, buildings, like pagoda-looking buildings, and, you know, looks very nice. Uh, uh, of course, Fukushima is still leaking. Ah, oh, yeah! A huge swath of leaking. And you don't hear the, uh, uh, the mainstream American media talking about this. They, sh they sure dummied up about this, didn't they? You know, but anyway, I also want to say hello to uh, New Jersey's premier uh, personal trainer to the stars and nutritional consultant, Mr. Mario Petrus. Greetings, Mario. And also to uh, Slick Rick Brown of Steel, Stone, and Sugar, uh, the, the, the magnanimous um, trainer, supreme trainer. In Southern California, Mr. Rick Brown, he's part of Steel, Stone, and Sugar. Um, okay. Walmart. Walmart had a, um, someone took a photo of details of a, um, uh, like a display case in Walmart you know you have like things that are on the shelves and then you have items that are on the end uh, they used to I don't know if they still call them end caps but they're you know uh, companies pay usually pay a little extra to have their products on the end but this was these were Walmart products mm -hmm. and before we go to lunch I mean before Reverend Bill goes to lunch and before I do my show and meet with William H. Morrow, our, our voiceover artist, I'm going to show the picture, the image, so you people please when you see the image that I'm talking about, hit the pause button and read it because this is evidence of what I'm saying. Walmart had a display case with Walmart products and um, all over the display case it said Walmart investing in American jobs Walmart proudly made with American jobs mm. but when you pick up the product itself and you scrutinize the label it says plain as the nose on your face made in China <laughs> so <laughs> there goes I thought you would get a kick out of that <laughs> so <laughs> there goes Walmart you know, as far as honesty, integrity, you know, they're they're liars. Advertising lies. They're That's liars. What it's all about PR lies. It's false. It's false advertising. Doesn't surprise me at all. But I think it's. I. I it was funny, but then again, not funny. How companies that mm -hmm. are sort of deregulated by the uh, wonderful Republican Congress are just allowed to lie to you and, and rob you and and uh, and uh, claim claim something that they don't do like support American jobs mm -hmm. and meanwhile it's all outsourced you know manufactured overseas and um, and they pay you absolute shit uh, wages wages have not risen for the last 30 some years and the Republican Congress is having a fit over ten dollars and ten, ten. ten. Whoa, that's too much. Ten dollars and ten cents an hour is so far below the cost of living. But let's raise let's raise the stock prices for the CEOs, okay? But CEOs okay. always blame it on the shareholders. You know. You know, hey, my fault. Uh, it's the shareholders. Well, like like William Morrow told me, you buy stocks, and. Uh, that's the chance you take. It's called, it's a common stock, actually. And 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 the CEO is obligated to his company, no, and not. not to kowtow to the shareholders. Yes, he is. That's what all corporations kowtow to, the shareholders. 
Well, that's that's not the original. Of old course school, not. Nothing is the way. original. Yeah, you, old school it's is you profit. care about your customers. Short term profit. The stock price must be kept high. That's what corporations uh, do worry about or whatever. Not a product, not the price, and not what uh, uh, what the customers say. That's all bullshit. No, well, that, no, it's it, it, it's it, it's no, it, it's it's honest. An honest way to run a business is not bullshit. But what they do is is contemptuous towards their customers, and because they're kissing, they're kissing up to the elitists because they're, they're the ones that are the shareholders. Why would they care about the customers when they have the monopoly share of the market? Why would they care about competition? So, so there no, is none. So no competition is breathing down their neck at That's all. That's correct. So they can do what they want. That's what happens when you privatize public stuff uh, with states and counties and, 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 and whatever. The state can raise the price and do what the hell they want then. Oh, so this thing I read last night was... might have been right. It said, so, it said something about... Um, yeah, well, you know, it seems like the uh, the attitude behind all these people running the corporations is very similar to Republicans. It in se actuality, it seems like they're 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 sociopathic in personality. The corporation runs the managers. The corporation is sociopathic. Yeah. Okay. No, no remorse at all for anything. No scruples for anything they do. Now, uh, uh, concerning some good items I was reading last night concerning, uh, you know, uh, uh, the best one of the best things that can happen is to overturn Citizens United. Bingo. And and, and, and it mentions bringing back uh, public funding for campaigns. Now, did that happen at one time? Public funding? No, in other words, take it's the public money. Public funding right now. Get, no, what, what they were saying something about uh, uh, discouraging the uh, huge campaign contributions from the fat cats to 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 candidates running for office. Yeah. Get the money out of politics. And ah, then that's say, a separate issue. That's separate from okay. what you were saying. Yes, that's the way to go. Get the money yeah. out of politics, and you know what else? Get the politics out of politics. Well, because politics, eh? politics auto automatically uh, uh, is a, uh, a demonized word because when you mention politics to people, they say, oh, no, I don't get involved in it. Oh, I don't want to hear that. Uh. Politics means division. And it says on our, I, I believe it on the, uh, what, what is it, on the money, on the Constitution or whatever, e pluribus unum. We are one. Right. Now, if you're talking about a politician that was very well loved, like FDR and John F. Kennedy, well, or Eisenhower, you know, you're talking about really good eggs, really good people, then the word politics is not demonized with there them. There were people who voted against them. Well, those are the, a greedy, lot of those people. Are the greedy scumbags. Whatever. So that, you know, that because one is good he's still considered bad by some. Well, what I mean is the less the less corporatist a politician is, the the uh, the the word politics in that person is not as negative. But even those who you, know I mean? you might assume and credit with being progressive could only go so far. Well, Bernie FDR as an example. Now, Bernie Sanders, you were telling me, made a couple boo-boos concerning, uh, was it the military contract of building that new plane? Yeah, he wants it in uh, Vermont. Yeah, was it the F... So, you know. F what? 35. F-35, and then they, there's something else he did. Uh, well, it's connected with that. Whatever it is, he's got to take money from those who are going to give it to him. And the little people don't give money. So you know, when you're taking money from somebody, you are obligated to them. So is that is that why Hillary Clinton is is behind Monsanto? Of course. Because Monsanto's giving her mega bucks. 
Hillary Clinton is a corporatist, just like the other ones. But I'm sure I, I'm I sure pointed that out to somebody yesterday. He was saying something about uh, 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 um, a Republican wouldn't do that, or or, or a Republican has never said something uh, like uh, uh, stop, stop, something, no, something about uh, cutting the poor or something. What does this guy live under a rock somewhere? There's a lot of people. Republicans disdain the poor. There's a lot of people totally out of touch with reality. Especially, yeah. especially these idiots that like to hear themselves talk online. These teabagger, I don't know what the hell they are, actually. But yeah, they're, they they're, don't either. they're from under a rock. Because you they know, don't know what the hell is going on. I'm willing to bet that Hillary, Chelsea, and Bill Clinton do not consume GMO foods, regardless who, what corporation they're behind. If, they're, if she's behind Monsanto, I'm sure she eats healthy. And that goes he may for. may not. That, I mean, that's why Bill Clinton ended up like he did with his heart problem and everything. I mean, that goes for. He doesn't eat properly. The, 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 the food from the White House or whatever. The GMOs, that's something. That's another issue. Yeah. But the point is, uh, they're corporate whores, two party system. I, we say this every week. That's it's corrupt. Right. They're corporate whores, and uh, we have to, uh, people should demand that the independent candidates are invited to the televised debates. That is not solving the problem. Yeah, people get to know them. That is not solving the problem. Well, how is the... Make the field fair. That is fair. And that takes money out of politics. But if an independent is a true progressive... Who's going to put him in the debate? Where's his money that he can compete on the road to the debates? Well, what if, uh, what if the American public just makes a decision based on hearing what this kind independent? Of decision? The American public does not make the laws anymore. The corporations well, and the plutocrats well, do. Well, when... Um, when Barack Obama was running for re-election, I thought Joe Biden kicked uh, Paul Ryan's ass in the debate. I thought he did an outstanding job, and, and that's that. That carries a lot of weight in in, in the uh, public eye. Watching Joe Biden just uh, obviously not kick his ass because Joe Biden is down on the list of uh, presidential candidates. Now, I'm, I'm giving you an example about the power of a televised debate. People get to really see the candidate and hear them and, and, and you know... Why? It's better than any commercial. Why? Because they're, they're, go, they're discussing the issues back and forth. You didn't forth. see Ralph Nader. You didn't see Jill Stein. Because they and weren't. You didn't in, see Rocky Anderson. Because they weren't invited to the debates. That's my point. I'm making the point again. I'm the one that originally mentioned inviting them to the debates. No, nobody invites them to the debate. That's the problem. That's not the problem. Then what the is problem the problem? Is they, ju he just likes to contradict old James. That's what it is. Because you never listen to what I say. What is the problem? The system. You keep on saying that and every year. the system has to be changed. Period. Well, who changes the system? You don't invite them. You don't do this. You don't but do who, that. But who changes the system? Laws. Who Making laws. Who changes the two-party system? And in the, somebody independent from the two-party system. Oh, God. There Some, is nobody independent but one person in the, in the Senate and in the Congress right now. No People you mentioned before. There's uh, only Bernie. Uh, what about your Ralph Naders and your uh, what about them? Possibly your Jill Steins or or Rocky Anderson or Jesse Ventura or um, uh, Dennis Kucinich. I mean, what about all these people? If they ran as an independent and they got invited to the te televised debates, if they ran as an independent, they might change. They the need system. money. What you're saying is change the system. You think that being in a televised debate is Stop not the televised is not debate. enough? See, what do you like those Stop commercials? Stop with it. What, you like those? You're, not, you're you're putting the cart before but, the horse. But you put more value in the in the commercials. I oh God, you're way off the beam now. 
What? Why do you say it qu requires commercials money? cost money? What? Well, the independents don't have money. How did he get into the debates? How did he get into the commercials? How did he get into anything? Unless you change the field. People laugh at at political commercials. What does that have to do with changing the system? Why do you think you need? Why do you think you need a lot of money to win an election? Why? You tell me. Because if, that's the setup. If you go to the debate, if you're that's the system. If you're the, which I want to change. If you're the primary independent. Oh God. If you're one no of the. No wonder you can't change the. If mind you're one the of the most popular independents. And uh, you're running on a low budget because you're not kowtowing to corporations, okay? Right. But but you're you're the man for the job or woman. How do people in Get Arkansas it. know that? Because they'll see. Well, you have a low budget. Because they'll see you on a debate. Debate. You're not getting to the debate. Well, then people have to insist that the the uh, the people independents have get to, to the make debate. Laws. People have to make laws, not the corporations right. and not the plutocrats. We need an even playing field for everyone. And that involves changing the system that you have in order right now. Hey, I'm all for that. No, you're not. You think in terms of, uh, hey, invite them to the debate. What debate? They ain't going to no debate. And why not? Money! You have to, you have to grease somebody's palm to get on the debate? No, you have to have money to run your campaign. Yes. What's the matter with you? To buy commercials. To do this, that, and Here, the other Here's thing. with the commercials To again. buy paper. To send out placards to people, etc. Money! Oh, God. Money, money. Oh, God. Like that song, money, 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 money. Oh, God. And that involves, again, as I say, 1,000 times the system it is in effect now is corrupt and has to be changed. Now, how you change it is a problem. Because you, as an individual yeah. in America, right. cannot walk into a congressman's office or a senator's office and say, I want this law put into effect. But if you're Alec, if you're a plutocrat in the yeah. corporation, you can do that. Because you got money to burn. That's correct. And you got money to bribe. That's correct. They run America. You don't. And until you're back in effect and in charge, none of these things can be accomplished, like changing the system. Right. But that's what has to be done. Okay? Okay. Well... Solution is there! Yeah. How to bring it about is a problem. Is a problem. Well, let us now sink our teeth into these readings. Oh my God. Oh my God. Governor Rick Perry oh, gosh. was indicted Good. on two felony counts for alleged abuse of official capacity and coercion of a public servant last Friday by a Travis County grand jury. The case stems from Perry's veto of the $7.5 million biennial funding for the Travis County Public Integrity Unit last year. He threatened to withhold the money unless District Attorney Rosemary Lemberg resigned. In announcing the indictment, Special Prosecutor Michael McCrum <laughs> what a name. of San Antonio McCrum said he felt confident in the charges brought against the governor and was ready to go forward. Marianne Wiley, general counsel for the governor, said 
that Perry is being charged for exercising his, his rights and power as governor. Rights and power, so he he lives by a different set of rules than us, I guess. Isn't he bitching about the uh, the excess of power that Obama might uh, do uh, uh, to help the immigration problem? Yeah, well, they're always Isn't calling Obama a, a dictator. Dictator, tyranny! Tyranny, 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 yeah. Tyranny, because they're pissed off that uh, things are not going their way, you know, with the... Um, with the plut plutocratic oligarch and uh, and and uh, and uh, I guess enslaving the mainstream. Uh, the veto in question was made in accordance with the veto authority afforded to every governor under the Texas Constitution. We will continue aggressively to defend the governor's lawful and constitutional action. We believe we will ultimately prevail. In announcing the indictment, McCrum said that he weighed the duty he had in looking at a sitting governor. I took into account the fact that we're talking about the governor. That carries a level of importance. But when it gets down to it, the law is the law. And the elements are the elements. And the analysis is whether the facts meet the elements of the offense. Perry made it clear in public and through emissaries that he didn't believe the state should fund an office headed by someone who had lost the public's trust. He pointed to Lemberg's April 2013 arrest for drunken driving. Mm -hmm which included her videotaped belligerent conduct while being booked. At the time, the Public Integrity Unit, which investigates and prosecutes public corruption and malfeasance, was examining one of Perry's signature projects. If she had resigned, Perry would have appointed her replacement. Lemberg, who had pleaded guilty fulfilled her 45-day sentence, completed a treatment program, and refused to resign. Perry vetoed the money. McCrum was appointed to look into the case, and the current grand jury has been studying the charges since April. At issue was whether Perry was simply playing typical political hardball, or whether he crossed the line by threatening a public official to take an action, resigning, by which he might gain a benefit. The grand jury is looking at potentially three state statutes, whether the longtime Republican governor tried to bribe a public official into stepping down, if he abused his position by misusing public funding to obtain a benefit, or whether he tried to coerce Lemberg into taking a specific performance of her official duty. Barry's office has defended his actions, saying he exercised his constitutional authority to veto appropriations. A half dozen members of Perry's staff have appeared before the grand jury, including his budget expert, legislative liaison, deputy communications director, and criminal justice advisor. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll have to wait on that one, huh? Yeah. Well, there's no doubt that Republican governors uh, <coughs> most likely have many skeletons in their closet that are ready to fall out. So, you know, your Scott Walkers, your Chris Christie's, and this guy, Rick Perry, this, this, uh, this uh, bubble-headed booby. Foreign dog breeders 
have gone unregulated for years. Shipping puppies so young and so sick that one in four died before reaching a U.S. airport. Um, you thought you talking about puppy mills or just breeders? Period. Foreign dog oh, breeders. Foreign, foreign dog breeders. Okay. The U.S. Department of Agriculture approved a regulation Friday that, starting in 90 days, will require all puppies imported to the United States to be at least six months old, healthy, and up to date on vaccinations. Census Bureau data show about 8,400 puppies a year were imported between 2009 and 2013. Because there were no regulations, mm. however, the Humane Society of the United States believes right. the numbers were much higher. Many of the puppies came from mills in China and oh, Eastern Europe. for God's sakes. The country that likes to kill and eat dogs is, is, is breeding dogs for pets? The, the, where everything they make and everything they grow is, is either tainted or, or, or defective or toxic. But it's cheap! Wow. There's your capitalism for you. What a bunch of idiots out there in America who, who still try to argue with me waving the American flag. Whoop de doo! You know, America, America, America. I said, I said to one guy, you sound like Larry the Cable Guy. Oh, America, number one, America, America, America. You don't like it? Leave it. You don't like it? Oh, Scandinavian countries do it the best? Oh, why don't you go move to Scandinavia? You know what? Go fuck yourself. I think, I think it was Gary Knoll, I'm not sure, but he, somebody put up last night on Facebook. Uh, there's this uh, show where there's this one news guy who, who, who tells the truth all the time. He's not very popular in his newsroom, of course. Is he on, like, mainstream media? No. Cable. Oh. And anyway, these newsmen were gathered around a table, and they were, uh, I think it was the, in a college or something, they were talking to the class in the college, the young kids in the audience. And everything was... America is the greatest country in the world. I, I would have had a big fight with him if I was in this. Story. Well, the gentleman, when it was his turn to speak, began speaking and told them the truth that America is not great in anything. Period. Period. And I mean. And he listed them all. I mean anything. And then some, someone asked something on. Facebook yesterday, oh, where are they in uh, something? And it's down the bottom of the list. <laughs> America, like, uh, inf uh, you know, uh, infancy, uh, death, and etc. Hey, we're down the bottom. Has, hasn't all great civilizations in mankind uh, uh, met their demise? They all have, they all have met their demise. They all have all empires have died. Have, have died. All empires have died. Except the one that resurrects every now and then, and we're waiting for its seventh resurrection. In the United States right uh, now. empire was, what, it's only like 250 years old? Was it 1776 until now? I mean, well, actually from 1789, when the Constitution yeah. took effect. So. Listen. Regardless what Ronald Reagan used to say about socialism and communism failing and capitalism being number one, it's all bullshit. Capitalism has proven to be a complete failure unless you're... Not for the plutocrats. Unless you're rich. Yeah. Unless you're rich. But that's how it was meant to be. So the American, the so-called American dream and capitalism is for the rich. My grandfather was right today to have a modest American dream. 
you need to make a hundred and thirty thousand dollars to be ahead of the game not ahead I just said modest modest American dream. well some people that means a car your kid is in college some people might be house. some people might be happy with that but you need hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year to acquire that didn't you hear my point so so the medium in the median income in America today is fifty one thousand dollars only Right, and so the poverty, the government's projection of, of what the poverty level is, is probably uh, uh, way below what it really should be. What did they say? Twenty, twenty-two, twenty-one thousand dollars a year is. I believe that's a family of four. Poverty? No, poverty is uh, is higher than that. It, it, it not, I don't think I, you can't live on that. Twenty, twenty thousand a year. Of course not. And besides, family something has to be done rather soon. What do you live in a treehouse? Family of four? Uh, somebody put up a video the other day of uh, houses that could be made for the floor, little small ones. I, I noticed that. I noticed that little little uh, little cubby hole, little pigeon coops, chicken coops. Yeah, I saw that. I made a so comment. Where can you put them? Because the cops will come and rip them up. Well, one was a solar tent. One, you know? one was a certain kind of, of flexible fiber that when you put water on it, it, it becomes hard like concrete. Yeah, that one, yeah. But these but, were just made out of wood. Where do you put them? Yeah. If you're broke and somebody gives you one of these chicken coops to live in... <laughs> I mean, you know, and you're, and you're homeless and you're flat broke. Okay, where do you put the chicken coop without getting evicted from the land? Well, my the point being levity bills. Yeah. that something has to be done rather quickly, in some way, somehow, there will be no jobs. There will be people that cannot get, will not get, maybe don't want, whatever, jobs. Jobs won't be there. So that way, there will be no way of making a living that way. So there must be some way of providing for these people. Unless, of course, you put them into FEMA camps and kill them. But the day is coming when there will be so many people out of work and out of money that they will not be able to survive. Mm -hmm. So something has to be done. Now, it has been bandied around for years and years. Switzerland is doing it right now. An annual income. Richard Nixon wanted to have an annual income for all Americans. You know, for Americans that uh, need it, actually. We don't need to give it to the rich. You don't need to give anything to the rich. That's no, correct. No, no subsidies, no bailouts, nothing. As the Bible says, they have their consolation. You need not cow to, to, to them, cater to them, or whatever. They have their consolation. Well, he who gives to the rich shall oh, surely come to want. That's correct. I mean, but you see uh, the uh, the people, the phony, uh, counterfeit Christian Republicans always giving to the rich. Oh, that's the Washington consensus. Always give to those who have because the others are just plain lazy. And no good, actually. Okay, they have no worth. If you don't have money, you have no worth in the capitalist system. Simple as that. Yeah, in order in order to to survive, number one, let alone have be happy and have a so called American dream, you need a bundle of cash. So the recent study says that for you to feel happy in America you need to make seventy five thousand dollars. Plus pay your bills. Well, that pays your bills. What are you talking about? Well, happy meaning, you know, having surplus cash to take nice, a decent vacation, maybe get a better car. I just said, 75 Go out to eat. Yeah. As you get more than that, happiness does not rise. As you get less than that, happiness is not there. Now... $75,000. And you... T one of the... One of my favorite things that you told me was yeah. the exact 
percentage of Americans from let's say 1776 and ten percent are self-made no who have ever moved up the economic mobility in other ladder. words if you're an American and you're born in a blue-collar neighborhood and your dad earned let's say you were like Archie Bunker living at 704 Houser Street Queens you're a blue-collar you're a blue-collar guy and they, they hangs out at the local bar and drinks cheap beer okay mm. only 10 percent of Americans ever elevated themselves to a higher well, standard of living is that what you're saying I right? wouldn't use the term elevated themselves because that indicates that the person did it you mean it's not the person's responsibility you mean got a break in life let's understand it from the other point of view 90 percent can't do it. So 10% were either elevated through uh, yeah. some sort of something beyond themselves. Some sort of privilege, a break in life, or breaks. Mm -hmm. Only 10% ever improved their lot in life mm -hmm. since the beginning of the United States. Mm -hmm. So all this. Uh, 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 Upward the, mobility. The land of uh, milk and honey and pull yourself up by the bootstraps and uh, the land of opportunity that some people I know were giving me the lecture about, mm -hmm. which is, I told them, is bullshit. Well, I'll tell you this. 30, 40, 50 years ago, a man was working at GM. He was making $50 an hour. Yeah. And that was a big, and now there, GM was a big company back then. Well, what I'm saying is Walmart. What I'm trying to say is, yeah, the fifty dollars an hour back then was with the prices around him and etc. Today, it's lower than that. Today, the largest okay. company, Walmart, is is much much lower than fifty dollars. Are you That's kidding me? It's, it's like, what is it? Eight dollars or seven and a quarter or, or nine bucks. But the problem is that the, the buying power is not the same. That's what it is. No, no the cost. Of it living. was equivalent to fifty dollars an hour. You know what I mean? Back then. Well, if you're if you're renting, you buy it. A sell. simple one bedroom apartment is like, on average, is like uh, give or take a thousand dollars a month, right? It's probably fourteen hundred dollars here, average. right here. Even in Florida, where there's really no jobs, I hear uh, a decent apartment. I mean, not a filthy, cockroach-ridden ghetto place, but a, you know, a decent place to live, clean. One bedroom is like eight hundred, seven between seven, eight hundred. It's closing in on a thousand a month. Well, yeah, but to, in a state where you know the jobs pay cheaper. And they're and they're few and far between, you know. Even all there is is retail jobs. It's not a good thing. Well, there's a lot of people retired down there. They don't need a job, so they use that as an excuse. I don't know who uses that as an excuse. The point is that there's a no, problem. No, there are people that are not old living okay. in Florida. There are young people. Of there. course, Mr. Null lives down there. Well, he has his ranch in that section that is going to be overrun by water soon. Oh, because of the rising sea level? Correct. You're talking about Gary Knoll's or organic farm? Whatever and he has and, down and his, there. And his place that he's got there? Whatever he has down there, he is, re he is noticing that the water when it comes up is coming up further and further and further. You're talking about fresh water or sea water? Sea water? What the hell fresh water? If you said fresh water, I would be afraid of the... Uh, the frackers are killing all friend, the fresh his water. His friends might be uh, disappearing from, from the alligators. Huh? Frack? Oh, fracking? Is killing all the fresh water. You see that photo of all the, the, the cattle that died from drinking fracked water? Yeah. From fracking? Yeah. I mean, what do they think? Again, that's another example of we the people aren't making the laws, the corporations and the plutocrats are. Right. Now in the Carolinas, they don't want to pay to clean up their fracking poison. 
the and the and the state support is what about behind them. Now they didn't want to fight. fight it, we, the, the state had to clean it up, or federal government or whatever. Yeah. They never want it. They want to socialize all of their bad things and privatize all the profits. So of course, of course, the corporation that's fracking is not going to like. The state coming down on them saying hey you better clean this all up because then the politicians I, I guess the governor won't get any money from corporations that's correct and if they ever say that it's all show because they will eventually do what the corporations want them to do because they're bought lovers okay paid for hook line and sinker they're paid for they're whores, they're corporate whores. The whole system is corrupt. And speaking of the whole system being corrupt, especially the two-party system, forget everything you were told ever about trickle-down economics. It doesn't exist. It was never meant to work. It's total bullshit. And I don't care if you stupid brain cell deficient teabaggers don't like what I'm about to say or disagree with me. What we have is siphoned up to the top 20% economics, the devil's economics. Siphon up economics. It's a siphon for those red state people that don't recognize this. Siphon up we economics. Don't have fish aquariums. <laughs> well, it's 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 a fish aquarium siphon. What do you, what do you expect me to bring in? It'd be a big, a huge siphon, you know, like well, they go out to the swamp to get their fish. They don't keep it in well, the aquarium. It's a siphon. Well, actually, I have I have another one at home that I use on my aquarium, and uh, it it eventually broke. It doesn't siphon anymore. Ugh. But I'm just keeping you this can one. Suck on it. This one is a prop. Maybe you can suck it. I don't think I want a mouthful of aquarium water. I use <laughs> that for fertilizer, and it makes outstanding fertilizer for my veggies. Ugh. But no, not to have it in my mouth. So this is what we got. Siphon up economics, all right? All right. Just, just for prop purposes, I, I will keep that. This is the second major USDA effort regarding puppy mills in the last 12 months. In September, the agency enacted what is called the re breeders. Having four or more female breeding dogs have to be licensed if they are selling to consumers Sight on scene on websites, in flea markets, or in classifieds. Yeah. Both the Humane Society and the ASPCA said they routinely get calls from people who unwittingly bought a puppy, mill dog, from a foreign or U.S. breeder, only to have it die because its illnesses were too severe to overcome. You make sure that breeder is registered and licensed. Hey, when we when we walk into a restaurant, don't we see a a health department certificate on the wall? Sometimes uh, giving giving a grade. Um, they give a new um, um, a letter grade. I think. Uh -huh. Like t they they grade the restaurant as far as their inspection goes. Yeah. First, and in New York, it don't matter. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. No, because they were paid off, they were this, that, and the other thing, and they just give them their oh, really? letter. This yeah. sh that shit still goes on, even cockroaches, with, rats, even, the whole even plant. with Mayor, Mayor uh, De Blasio, it oh, still goes on. Of course, Pe what? people getting paid off. Hey, mayors can't do everything, and they don't know everything. That is a problem. These things have to be brought to their attention. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise they would have to hire undercover spies to spy on yeah. the people working for the city. Uh -huh. They would have to have spies, and then what if the spies are paid off? <laughs> you see what happened with the, with the cranes and all that stuff? These guys are supposed to inspect them and a crap. And it and crashes do down it. and lands on somebody? That's correct. Yeah. It has been hard to track the number of puppies that are imported. We have seen an increase just in the past few months based on calls from consumers who bought teacup puppies from Korea. Oh boy. Yeah, that's right, like teacup uh, toy poodles. Remember the chihuahua in the old days in the teacup on, a, on the back of uh, comic books? You, I think it's 
dangerous. Well, it, some people might think it's cute mm -hmm. to have a little thing like this that you can fit in your pocket, but I hear that uh, a, a heavy person or a fat person can accidentally sit on a teacup poodle and, and, and kill it and not even know it. You know, just sit, you gotta really watch them. You gotta watch them carefully. They're too small. Yeah. You know, but you know, breeding, what they've done with breeding, when they go too far and it's a detriment to the animal, I'm not for that type of breeding, you know. Importers have been sending puppies that are less than eight weeks old to the United States in airliners, cargo holds. Don't forget, there's no heat down there. No. In the cargo hold. Oh, no. As far no, as I know. No. Well, they, they ship them in crates, right? Yeah. Imagine a six-week-old puppy. In a dark, from Asia. In a dark crate. To the United States. How frightening that, that poor thing is probably scared out of his wits. We are talking about baby animals. Yeah. They are delicate as it is. They could be shipping 100 dogs in the cargo hold. You only need one dog to have an illness, and all of them could have it by the time the plane lands. It's an airplane cabin. Don't people get sick aboard an airplane? One person yeah, has the Yeah, because the air flow. is just recycled. It sneezes or something? Yeah. Under the new regulation published on Friday, violators can be fined up to $10,000. Heavily fine them, without a doubt. The ban eliminates the easy access to market that foreign breeders have had for years. All for the sake of money. Well, as in everything for the sake of money, I mean, in our vaunted capitalistic system. With disregard for animal life, the environment, human life. Of course. You know, of and, course. Uh, and people like really look up to that stamp of approval. Oh, USDA, FDA approved. Look at all the drugs that were recalled after people dropped dead. Oh, you're going to really, that's why I don't, I so, you know, and what about the Pinto? I really don't feel comfortable with the USDA certified organic label. I don't feel confident in that at all. Well, they want to change it so that the bad food can be labeled under organic. Okay. Ready for okay. your break? Yes. Okay. It is I'm time. Starving. It's it is time. Don't interrupt me. You're you're you'll be like that young man I interviewed. Uh, I did a video connected with uh, um, uh, Holistic Health Talk. He, uh, he was a young man that had uh, attention deficit disorder, disorder. Uh -huh. and he wouldn't sit still and he couldn't concentrate at all. He had, he had a point, he had not even 0.1%, he had almost no attention span at all. And uh, I, uh, I titled it about children getting fed toxic sugar. The sugar was he plays on a big something? role in that, huh? Was he on something? Ritalin or something? The grandfather d didn't say if he was on something, but the grandfather did say he had severe attention deficit disorder, and the kid just couldn't sit still, could not concentrate. He couldn't listen to me. Like, only for a split second, he would listen to my question, and he would, he's like, he's he was out of control. So, and then uh, I mentioned sugar. And uh, I just think the kid, uh, you know, today's children are so overly coddled and, 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 and the parents give them anything they want just to shut them up. No discipline. And the kid probably gets tons of sugar. It's obvious that these children are getting too much sugar in their diet. Dr. Feingold, Feingold. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, so anyway, it's time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. I will now meet with our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow, uh, and um, you will, before I meet with William H. Morrow, which is going to be followed by our promo done by William H. Morrow, uh, as soon as we leave you, you're going to see the, the image, the picture of what I was talking about earlier with Walmart 
claiming that it's in, that it invests in American-made products and American jobs. It, it's a complete lie, and you'll see where it says Walmart invests in American-made products and American jobs, and then you will see the, the close-up of the label where it states made in China. You'll see Bingo. that right now. Right. Bingo! We'll catch you later. Bingo! Okay, we're here with William H. Moore of the Third, our voiceover artist. Now, <clears throat> before I start with the main topic, I just want to uh, add some inductees into this week's Chisler's Hall of Shame. Number one, Progresso Soups. I used to eat Progresso Soups when I was a kid, and it was chunky and chock full of ingredients, meat, veggies. Now it's mostly liquid. It's really uh, despicable, to say the least. Uh, also, uh, I noticed that Dunkin' Donuts and Whole Foods Bakery, they shrank the sizes of their donuts and muffins. But the prices sure didn't shrink. So I'm gonna induct uh, these three into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. I'm sure we will have other inductees this week. Now, Mr. Morrow. Sneaky companies ripping off unknowingly, ripping off people unknowingly, like the power company, or um, or is it a result of uh, incompetence of well, today's? First of all, you have to well, let me finish my ripping off. Though. Well, you say ripping off. You got to back that up by ripping. Well, off. like for instance, uh, when a person gets an electric bill that's uh, astronomically high and uh, there's no way they uh, they well, rang up that example. bill. There's also another example of your actual true bill. They could be adding a couple pennies here and there, or five, ten cents, you wouldn't notice a difference. But when you're dealing with millions or tens of millions of customers, those little nickels and dimes add up big time. So you just wouldn't know. You read, last month was uh, say a hundred hundred dollars and twelve cents next month is a hundred dollars and seventeen cents right you think nothing of it but that adds up yeah now or is it a result of the incompetence of today's cheap office labor you know, like like for instance well, uh, for instance the situation you had you had you you made an appointment with, with a physician uh, in advance well and when I got there they uh, suddenly don't take my insurance. In my coverage book, every doctor in their office and their their organization, every one, they were the first on the first page. I said, and, and they couldn't find me in the computer. Right. I said, we have you have no appointment. I said, I said, what's going on here, ma'am? I said, I called your number. Right. At your headquarters, and it's written on my card. It says eight twelve nine thirty. Right. Today is the 12th, meaning this was two days ago, and it was about 9.20. So I said, I don't understand what's going on. So my people are working on it to find out what is yeah. just is going on. You weren't, you weren't even in the system. Yeah. We have no record of you having an appointment here. I said, well, I made this over two weeks ago. There you go. I said, what's going on? So I don't understand what's going on with anything. It's just like you, everything's crapshoot. It's what you will rule out, whatever you do. You make an appointment, you may not have one when you get there. You just don't know. No, I've had, I've but had. I sound cynical, but I'm tired of it. I, I've We've had, all been through a lot with this stuff, and it's, it really gets on you after a while. It really does. Well, I've had personal um, situations very similar. I just noticed across the board, nowadays, there seems to be this incompetence with the office people they hire, and, and I think it's because they're all paying cheap, and or they could be outsourced. Well, well, nobody made you take the job. You went and applied for the job, went through the interview process, and accepted the job. You knew what the job entailed. Now that you were accepted, fortunately, you're lucky to have a job. Why aren't you doing the job? What's your problem here? If you can't do the job, just say, I can't do this. 
you supposedly have the best technology like everybody else, computers and whatever, what have you, and fax machines. Yeah, but if all the companies are doing the equivalent of price gouging in, in terms of salaries, if they're all stiffing people and they're not getting a, a living wage, then I don't blame people well, for don't not take for, the job. I, I don't blame people for not giving a shit. Don't take the job then. If you don't want to do the job, don't accept it. See, I don't well, want to work here. That I can't. Accept, I can't live on that. Well, I say, I say, have the government put pressure on the companies <clears throat> to give a living wage and. Uh, and well, I, you know, I agree very much with that. Know, like I've also. Or bring in the unions. Bring the unions well, back. That possibly, or also, as I said, I think minimum wage, like working in the fast food places, establishments. I think when you're making that minimum wage or near it, you should not be taxed. Oh, let's be honest. After taxes, what are you really making per hour? Is this fair to the individual? Come on. Well, they're even taxing unemployment. Yeah, so this is just wrong. <laughs> I mean, people need to live. Don't you want your people to live a little bit? Have a little enjoyment. I don't understand. Well, so. you, you remember what Henry Ford said. He wanted his employees to be able to yeah, buy. Everybody in America could afford a car and all of his employees could afford a Ford. To, to buy a Ford, right. Yeah. I don't understand this, this thinking. We're taxing minimum wage people, so I don't know if they're... After taxes, what are they making? Six, maybe seven, oh five, give or take, or whatever. It's insane. It's, I think it should be exempt from tax. A certain amount should be exempt from taxation. And since and you know what else should be taxed? The the mega churches. Well, you also have the lotteries exempt too, to an extent. To an extent. Anything yeah. up to five hundred ninety nine dollars, they'll pay you at any eight, <clears throat> whatever you want to call it, agent or whatever store. Yeah. And it's tax free. Now, I don't understand this. Yeah, like, it's almost like price gouging of the the underprivileged. Yeah. Or the, or the price gouging of the minimum wage earners. So right. Speak. Uh, we're going to take it from you. Yeah. We want it. We want a piece of your action. Well, uh, we're doing nothing from from. We're doing nothing for you. But you're our partner. You're going to pay us. Unemployment is just as bad as getting a minimum wage, uh, more or less. Yeah. I mean. Uh, and, and that shouldn't be taxed, but they're taxing it. We're just not doing enough to help our people and keep our people happy. It's just uh... No, it's like, it's like it's deliberately set up to keep, to oppress the poor and the mainstream. Well, it is. I mean, it's got to be because it's law. It's what the law says they get per hour and uh, they must be taxed, which is law. That's on the IRS or whatever you want to call them right. nowadays. I don't know. Gestapo. Uh, but I... <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, speaking of Gestapo, We've got to take care of our people better. They're we not really doing it. Do. And and any pastor, any big time pastor or evangelist that wants to stick his nose in politics, I think they should pay taxes like well, that like that guy in uh, uh, um, evangelist pastor John Hagee in his Baptist church in Texas says that that uh, the poor should should like or start to uh, start to death. Well, that's real nice, and he doesn't. He gets away tax free. He that wouldn't great? give. He wouldn't give food stamps. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, but because he, to, he's under the, the the guise of a church. He's not religious. That's his front. It's a front, right? Uh, it's odd. I don't understand why we do what we do. Sometimes we're taxing people that can't afford to be taxed. For one thing, minimum wage earners. Right. <clears throat> Even if it goes up to fifteen dollars an hour, which is what they're well, Seattle, Washington. Out, that still should be tax free. Yeah. That's still not quite yeah. enough to live yeah. off. Yeah. Of. It's yeah. a lot better than what you've been getting, people. But Seattle, Washington, raised it to fifteen an hour. But then again, you, you you put these people on this minimum wage, and you take you suck money from it, you tax them, but you still don't, by law, pass where they get any benefits at all. Right. They still don't get benefits. No. The government's got their hand in their till, and they get left with what? Scraps. Yeah. It's just wrong. And don't get me wrong. You know, I mean, you, you love you love the government the whole bit, and I do. I do love my country immensely. I'm proud to be an American. But some things we do are wrong. Yeah. And some things need to be adjusted and changed. Right. We need to take care of our people. I'm not bitter, <clears throat> but well, I am disturbed by it. Well, there's, yeah. Well, there's definitely incompetence across the board when it comes when you when you call an office and you get disconnected or you don't get a human being. Well, I called about. Remember, I mentioned earlier in the conversation. Yeah. The, uh, they said we don't cover this insurance. 
but they, they always were number one in the book. But they always took your insurance. No, but I called the girl at the insurance company yesterday. She said, could you hold for two or three minutes? I said, man, not to be rude, but I'd rather not, because I know on these phone calls how long two or three minutes can be. You have my phone number, right? She read it off to me. I said, fine, will you call me back? Can you call and contact the doctor's office? I never heard a word from her yesterday. I haven't heard a word yet today still. Wow. So now you tell me, what do I, what do, I do here? I don't know. There's just one example. How many others, th tens of hundreds of thousands or millions, maybe are going through this? This happens constantly. But you, but you wanted me to stay on hold for two or three minutes. Well, we're going on 48 hours. Right. It's not your so, fault. It's not your fault. I told her, I said, ma'am, I know how this goes. It won't be two or three minutes, But, but please. see, they're, they're making you, they're yeah. penalizing you and making you suffer for something they I'm did. I'm still up in the air. I don't know where but, I stand. But you didn't screw up. They messed up. You said I, my new coverage, my new program, nothing changes. It says nothing changes. Nothing changes. Well, I went in and said, oh, we don't think this insurance. Right. Well, I don't need shocks like this. I know, I know. I'm a little tired of it. And, but this, know, so. okay. Yeah, so uh, we both agree through personal experience and observation with others that across the board, there seems to be almost deliberate, deliberately set up incompetence in every industry, whether, you know, especially customer service, uh, customers are not respected anymore. Uh, uh, there, there seem to be contempt for the consumer. Well, customer service is, is, is worse than it ever was before. And uh, it could be anything. It could be a government program, a uh, caseworker. It could be a business putting you on hold forever. Uh, it could be mis, uh, misbilling. Well, I think the bottom line it comes down to human beings. The bottom line is a, major a, a great, I don't know if it's a minority or a majority, a great amount of people are not good workers. It's that simple. It's that simple. Don't say everybody's creative. That's BS and platitudes. They're just not good. They're lazy. Like I said moments ago, they go in, apply for the job, want to get the interview, hope they get the job. When they get the job, they don't do the job. And all they do is complain yeah. about the job. Well, the companies, the companies don't want to pay for an experienced worker with a good track record. You do the best you can, you've got the job. You always go far beyond what you, is required by you. I was always told that by my father. Money or not, you wow. do your best and go beyond. It's laziness, Jimmy. Why am I not being paid enough? So I'm not going to do it. I run into people like I had when I was in management. I said, these people, are, this is ridiculous. But they don't, but they don't, they don't. Then why don't you leave? Quit. They don't uh, um, promote you based on merit like they did in the old days anymore. They don't appreciate yeah, they do. the employees. Yes, they, do. Yeah, they, do. they treat you like shit. It's a very small today. promotion, and a lot of it's time promotion, but quarterly or annually. It's so minuscule, basic, over the board, yeah, they don't. Basically. They don't give you much, like no, uh, I mean, ten, somebody... Ten dollars more a week, what's that break down to in an hour? Ten dollars more a week. Cent, Forty cents, twenty cents, ten cents, I mean... Like, Some, somebody that worked for Old Navy in the Gap no. told me they only got twenty-five cents for, uh, raised for the whole year. Twenty-five cents for the year? For the year, that's it. You mean per week, per hour, or what? Per, per hour. See, that's just... If, you work, if you're lucky enough, and that's... Most companies won't give you full time. What's what's forty hours times twenty five cents a quarter? That's ten dollars. It's crap. Ten dollars extra a week. It's chump change, is what it is. And how after the taxes on that too? How right. much does that come to? You know, people with this cost, the high cost of living, people need what they call a living wage. If you want somebody, if what? you if you want a staff working for you, that's top notch. You have to. Pay for it. But they're I'm not going to not going to work for a figure. True figure. <clears throat> I say across the board in America, depending on which region you're in, what is a true living wage? Give me a dollar amount. Say it's uh, uh, Gary, Indiana. It's, it's thirty-four thousand a year you need for a true living wage. Well, it's, well, it's Paramus, New Jersey. It, 48,000. Somebody should. I've never seen a true dollar figure. I've heard the term, the phrase, yeah. living wage. What is well, the, 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 amount to a living the, wage? the government's uh, assumption <coughs> of what the poverty line is. It's, I think it's 23,000. I, I think it's out, that's outdated. Based I mean, on look, a, it's 23,000 or 27,000. Anything below that is ba below based the on the cost of living. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't match up with the cost of living. I don't need. I don't even think if the fifteen dollars an hour in Seattle, Washington, matches up with today's cost of living. Well, if you're getting fifteen dollars an hour times forty, that's six hundred dollars a week. That's not before bad. Before taxes. Before taxes. After taxes. 
right. You're still not doing okay, that. Okay, okay. Well, it's a lot better than $10.10 that the, that the Congress is complaining about. Well, so you're doing a little bit better than lousy. Yes. You know, your you're nose is great. above water. You're, you're not high on the hog. No, no, no. You're not, you're not paying a mortgage no. for renting for a nice, a really nice place to live in. No, no. That's you, the bottom you, line. You, you, got, you might be able to live uh, safely, comfortably in, in a quiet neighborhood, but not. you're not going to live high on the hog. Right. No. With fifteen dollars an hour, and you then what if you have? That's just you. Wouldn't that be hard enough just if you were alone and single? What if you have a wife? Now number two, oh, yeah. children. Now what if you have children on top of that too? Now what are you doing? Uh, so how? You know, what can you really live on with that? Because you know most of these companies nowadays don't want to give full time. No, they don't. No, they, they don't. don't. They want to avoid the benefits, which is another part. As I've said before, the government should get involved in and say, "We know your tricks." part-time or not you're giving them benefits or some kind of right. benefits partial benefits something uh, give them something. and look look at what the average rents go for nowadays one bedroom apartment well, like it depends eight. where you are they do vary across the board different regions yeah you know uh, but uh, now it's it, the cost of living in general is not cheap by any means and uh, if, 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 a, if a company president wants the best working for him he has to give them incentives. He, he has. Well, he sure gives himself incentives. Oh yeah. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you can't give your people an extra, I don't know, thirty, forty, fifty dollars a week, but boy, you can give yourself millions of stock options every year. I, I heard about one CEO that was getting to ten thousand dollars an hour. Oh, he, and, and 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 they're and <coughs> and they're crying about lousy ten dollar and ten cent uh -huh. minimum wage. And probably a private jet, and whatever limo driver. Yeah. Little bit. How many of his employees are getting that? They it yeah. was it was shown that in the free world, the United States has the the highest paid CEOs, the um, the highest profit margin, you know, uh, 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 in corporations, among other things, and but also number one in poverty in the free world is the United States. Well, I don't know if I believe that. Ch children go to bed hungry, child oh, poverty. Oh boy, I mean, you've got children dying almost every few seconds in like Nigeria and other parts of Africa, what have yeah. you. I don't believe that. Argument. You know what the future of the United States is? Just take a look at Detroit. Looks like a war zone. It's horrible right now. They shut the. They still have the water shut off. I mean, leave Gary, Indiana, which was the birthplace and where Michael uh, Jackson grew up, his family. I think almost ninety percent of the entire town is boarded up. What about uh, Bridgeport? That, Bridgeport, Connecticut. It's horrible. Bridgeport's horrible. And then what used to be there, University of Bridgeport, an excellent school in its time. Now right. look. And that's that's your that's your um, your capital of the state, your state capital. I it's, thought it was Hartford. Awful. I don't think so. I think Connecticut. It's oh, I thought Bridgeport. it was. I thought no, it was I, Hartford. I'm pretty sure it's Bridgeport. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Now, uh, <clears throat> in the, in the news, I heard I heard that the media reporters, rather, I'm sorry, reporters from all the big networks were arrested in Ferguson, Missouri. Well, no, 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 no. I didn't hear about all the big networks. No, a couple, yeah. a couple were arrested. And it's wrong. It was wrong. They were eating... Well, that's censorship. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't from all the networks, no. It was a couple guys. They didn't arrest all of them across the board? No, 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 no. Not on the street or anything. No, it was a couple guys. And it was videotaped. Their cameraman did. And boy, even President Obama mentioned it today, because we do not rest our reporters for telling the truth of reporting. Yeah. They were sitting in a McDonald's eating this, this, yeah, he was dressed like a soldier, but he was, I guess he was cut police. Comes in and slams a guy against a Coke machine, soda machine, whatever, I mean, totally uncalled for. Pure, again, Gestapo tactics. Yeah. What is this, Nazi Germany? Like it's a police state. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is ridiculous. You know, and, and that cop, that cop... That could be assault. Well, what that cop did to the young uh, black man... Well, we don't know the whole story yet. We're hearing different versions. Well, he, he shot him in cold blood, like they said, like know. in the Wild West. We he, point know. blank, I'm unarmed. Not accuse the cop. Well, I'm not going to say the young man was innocent or guilty until all the facts are in. Well, we so, can't cast judgment. So far, the eyewitnesses from it the neighborhood... It sounds like the cop was wrong. Yes, I agree. But we don't know yet all the facts, and that's... The bottom line, too, is the young man was unarmed. He was unarmed. That's the bottom he line. He was either walking or running away. And held his hands He up. got shot in the back. 
and I then when he, he shot more than once, he, when he turned around, the cop shot him. Yeah, I just this is just wrong. He shot him in the front. This they, is like the day before he was supposed to start school. College. Listen, that's like the Wild West when they used to say murdering somebody in cold blood because he's unarmed and the cop blew him away. Yeah. That's unarmed it. and you get blown. Well, you remember that, what was his name? The guy that was killed years ago in New York. He unarmed and all the cops fired over 50 plus bullets at him. Oh, that was... Man, uh, something uh, Bell? What was his last name? Abed, Abedou Diablo? The, the Allo, uh, Abedou the Allo. But over 50 plus shots fired. <clears throat> well, he was going for his was, keys and, and the cops... He was unarmed. And he was unarmed. And the cops says, oh, he, he, it looks like he was going for a gun. 50 plus shots? It was in front of his house. 50 plus shots? Why does it take 50 bullets? Yeah. I mean, you know... Why, why does a cop have to uh, rough up and beat up an unarmed woman? They've, they've been doing that. Why did that homeless guy, why did he have to, to kill to beat the homeless man to death Who? in Arizona. I don't know that one. Yeah, was, I think it was Arizona or Texas, but, but the, the cops are beating up homeless people. It's almost like they don't want to talk and reason with you. And many times in the past, I have interfered. Not violently, I'm a very, because you know me all these decades. And I see the cop and arguing with the guy, and I go over, and I, I'm serious. I said, whoa, whoa, to the guy, not the cop. Calm down, please. I said, just everybody relax right now. I ne never lost one. And even the guy, the, whatever you want to call him, the perpetrator, defendant, or whatever, said, you were, you were, thank, you were so nice. He said, you calmed me right down. Try to talk to people. Don't come in yeah. and screaming in their face. You're right talking now. about disfusing the situation. He talks. Whoa, whoa, just relax. Well, Take it easy. Speaking you know? about police brutality, I'm gonna I'm gonna end the show with one thought, and let me know what you think. It happened recently. North Dakota police officer used a taser on an eight-year-old girl because she was taking a tantrum. Oh please! Now it takes a real big, tough, macho man to use a taser on you know, an eight-year-old girl. For don't God's get me sake. wrong for saying this. I have an awful lot of friends that are cops. That's, and that's cowardly. That's cowardly. Sometimes they just seem they want to play cops and robbers too badly and play with their toys, meaning tasers and guns or whatever. They've lost sight of how to truly and effectively diffuse a situation. And I'm not saying this goes for all cops. I'm just saying there's a certain few. I think right. there's a, a few bad apples in the barrel. I think the vast majority are, are great. But we always hear about the bad ones. Well, we do hear about the good ones once in a while. But lately there's like, been a lot of bad. It is, and it's sad. But because the police are not all bad. But you don't have to be trained in that situation. It's common sense. She's an eight-year-old. She's an eight-year-old girl. Is, what threat is she to me? As a, as a law officer. She's take, is a, she's not going to She's a kid bad. taking a tantrum. So he uses taser. Calm on. her down or try to just hold her at bay and keep back a little bit while you call for backup or maybe a social worker yeah. or somebody, a psychologist or somebody to come down and talk to her. See, little one, little one, relax. Please. That sounds like a, like, like a, taser, that sounds I mean, like, uh, a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a very insecure coward with a small dick. It's just, well, That's what it sounds it's like. just, some things you do. That's cowardly. And some things you don't do. I mean, just. Some just, things are necessary, a lot of things are unnecessary. Right. Just, it's a it's child. It's a minor. Just, pic just picture how small an eight year old girl is. If you pull is. the taser and I was your, your, your sidekick cop and you pull the taser out, I'd say, what are you nuts? I said, Jimmy, she's eight years old, man. I wouldn't let you do it. You know? Well, why was this guy doing this? Totally abuse. Well, he may be... Totally unnecessary. Not only abuse, he, it sounds like Eight he has years. some screw loose in gonna, his head. What's the argument? She was big for her age. I mean, come on. What there's no defense. There's no, there there's no defense against that. So, uh, there's you know. absolutely no excuse or defense no. against something like that. No. You know? My That's kids. It. So anyway... Uh, Until next time. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. 
This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Well, we're back. We're back, and uh, so I trust that you viewers saw the uh, the image, the photo banner of Walmart claiming to uh, be uh, supportive of uh, jobs in America, American jobs, you know, American-made products is a total lie, since the products plainly said on the label stated that they were made in China. So you saw the image, I hope you paused it and uh, really scrutinized it well and, and read everything there. So, uh, you know, if I bring up a subject, this is what I'm going to do from now on. I'm going to, uh, if I can, I am going to add evidence of what I'm saying. And all you have to do is hit the pause button. But uh, anyway, thank you very much, William H. Morrill III, for uh, meeting with me like uh, you have been doing uh, every week and uh, doing a great job with uh, our promo. Now, what Dr. Bill and I were discussing as he was uh, chowing down here was the fact that uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, well, the state of Florida has a Republican governor, which probably all the, uh, the uh, the redneck uh, Florida crackers that live in northern Florida voted for, voted, you know, him in. Well, they they hate the poor. They have a disdain for the poor. Uh, the uh, the rich and the conservatives, they created the class warfare against the poor. And uh, not only do they evict homeless people, but they destroy their homes. And in this case, the police were cutting up their tents, or shredding their tents. And the homeless really don't know where to go. I mean, and no matter where they go, even the, the homeless people in, in the, uh, lived in the woods in Lakewood, New Jersey, in tents, they were evicted from the woods. Where do you go? You can't, you, you can't have a tent. They, the, the, the right wing feels it's too much luxury. I think they want to kill off the homeless. And the poor, honestly. Yes. That's what it seems like. They're too much of a burden. And they will not work for slave labor. They're too much of a burden. Yeah. It's unbelievable. You don't want to pay for them, do you? Huh? You don't want your taxpayer money to pay for them, do you? My glasses. Uh, you well, are you, you're being sarcastic. Of course. You want, you want your taxpayer money, your tax money to go for big subsidies, subsidies to uh, big corporations. No, you don't want them to go to the poor. Listen, if I'm rich, just like Judge Judy said in an interview one time, if you're rich and you pay more in taxes and it helps the United States of America a lot, then as a rich person, I, I wouldn't mind, just like Judge Judy says, I don't mind paying more in taxes. If it's gonna help people and help the country, because guess what? You're still rich. You're still living high on the hog, even though you're paying uh, 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 the tax burden. It's the same thing that sociopathic corporations and their managers can't see. Uh huh. It's a very simple thing. Better wages, better buying simple as that. Henry Ford had the, the right idea, like I was telling Bill Morrow. Henry Ford wanted uh, his employees to be able to afford to buy a Ford. A Bingo. Ford a Ford. Bingo! <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, what better advertisement than an employee of a company using the product, the product that their company makes? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But they don't get it. But because that, they're sociopaths. That takes 
long-term thinking. Ooh. Well, you know, long-term thinking. The managers of corporation are not set up for long-term thinking. They're set up for quarterly thinking. Whatever happened to three months. Whatever time. happened to uh, uh, short-term re repeat uh, bu business? Uh, repeat business no, 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 and, no. and word of mouth advertisement. No, no, and no, no, no. Having your customers. And, and their children and perhaps their children's children coming back to buy your product because it's based on reputation? No, 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 no. And word what of they mouth? do is they take, a, they, let's say you, you are a company and you buy a product which is bundled up mortgages. And the mortgages go over 30 years, whatever. Mm -hmm. What happens today is, and what they did on Wall Street and etc. They take all that theoretical profit of 30 years, and they use it today. Uh huh. Okay. So there's no more 30 years of so many profits coming in every year. You use it today, it's gone. That's what they've been doing. Use it today to make loans, to make this, that, speculate, boom, boom, boom. But then it's gone. Your 30 years profits or theoretical profits are not there anymore. See? Short term. Every, all it is. every quarter. Every quarter. That's all they care about. That's what they care about. Stock price goes up if you're doing good in a quarter. CEO, CEO then walks away with high stock prices, para, uh, golden parachutes, yep. etc. And he drove the company into the into the ditch. Right. See? Not he's not getting compensated based on merit. No, no, no. Not no. at all. Oh, but they want that for poor people. And how many people actually do get raises and promotions based mm. on merit? That's another old school America. That's correct. Positive. Thing that took place. That's correct. So, getting back to what I said about the homeless, they're evicting the homeless that they themselves created, that our society themselves created, our leaders. I don't want to blame society because then, you know, you know that, that like in incorporates the people. But no, I mean that the system, that the system created. Correct. There is a division between the top 20% and the bottom 80%. Okay? I won't Just even like there's a friction between laborer and employer in our capitalistic system. There is not peace, my friend. You see it in history. Well, the employer is always trying to get more for less. Ah. Very good. See, the system created, yes, not our system, because when I use the word our, it's, it sounds too much like it's incorporating we the people, which I don't want to do that. It's really? the system, which well, means that's those what I corrupt. Just There's a division between the top 20% and the bottom 80%. Yeah, those corrupt, parasitic, blood sucking corporate whores on, on the top that are running things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, uh, before we mentioned police brutality getting worse, uh, you know, um, and that's it. All right, let us yes, see. Yes, the police no longer protect and serve. They are militarized. Yeah, and the they are an occupying force. And the police are acting more crim criminalized, criminalistic. Well, they get away word. with it. Yeah, that's what the problem is. Abuse of power. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, abuse of power, uh, should I say Chris Christie? You know, Chris Christie has not been shining, a light being shown on him lately. He's off the spotlight. Well, he's bigger he's than... He's raising he's money. He's actually much bigger than the spotlight. He's raising money for the Republicans. Ah. Uh, he appeared somewhere the other day uh, in which he uh, uh, defended his position, whatever the hell it was. 
with an arrogant remark. Of course. You know, as, as usual. Yeah, you gotta agree with him at the town meetings. That's correct. You gotta, if you don't agree with him, I had enough of you. He'll like, what, you know, he'll terminate the conversation. That's correct. But he hasn't been, you know, in the paper that much as I've seen. So mm -hmm. something's calmed down, or whatever. Ready to move on here? Yes, sir. All right, let me see what we got here. <gasps> More dogs. Nancy Frank could no longer care for her two chihuahuas. Nancy Frank should have gotten dox hounds. Get it? Because they look like Frankfurters. Nancy Frank. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. So she was glad to find a young man she thought would give them a good home. Days later, the dog's remains turned up at a gruesome site uh -oh. in a Reno motel where detectives found a decapitated dog and four dog heads. Was this some kind of satanic ritual? In a small refrigerator. Oh my God, those poor pups. Two of the heads belong to Nancy Frank's dog. Sickos out there, I'll tell you. Jason Brown, 24, was arrested on July the 9th. Charged with six felony counts of torturing or maiming and killing an animal in troubling in a troubling case that has sparked public outrage. Jason Frank, good, they got him. Brown. Brown, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jason Brown, they, they captured him, good. Authorities said they were called to the motel in a busy area across the street from a shopping mall in suburban South Reno, Nevada. What's the story on this uh, Jason Brown? After a maid reported the discovery in a room Brown had been renting. What an idiot. He knew, he knew the maid was going to come in and clean. Officers also found two bloody kitchen knives, the scissors of a Swiss army knife, two dog collars with rabies tags registered to Nancy Frank, along with her dog's dishes, blankets, and tennis balls she had given Brown to help make her pets happy. She, she, so she entrusted the dogs with Jason Brown to take care of them temporarily. She could no longer care for them. Oh, she gave she he had he adopted the Chihuahuas from Miss Miss Frank. He adopted them and decided to torture and kill them. On Wednesday, a half dozen animal protection activists, <coughs> excuse me, with signs demonstrated outside Reno Justice Court, where Brown's status hearing had been scheduled, but was continued to October the 16th. His lawyer, John Oakes, told the Reno Gazette Journal last month. He is a that Brown has mental health issues. There we go. He, he's, 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 and might need a psychiatric evaluation he's not before he goes to trial. He's not responsible for being evil. Don't blame it on him. Prosecutors say yeah. Brown killed five dogs at the motel and a sixth one at another location. Like Myself and William Morrow have said for a long time now, animals need and deserve rights in law, and made into law, animal rights. Animals have been abused, 
and tortured and killed for way too long now. What about those sheep shearers on Facebook the other day? I mean, I asked a stupid question. I thought you sheared sheep several times using their uh, uh, wool and etc. I always thought... But if you're punching them in the face and you're kicking them and you're bruising them and, 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 and cruel to them, well, how are you going to get a second shearing? They're dying. I mean, I was... I don't know. I don't what know what to say. I just know that uh, that uh, I always thought that sheep's were sheared and uh, like 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 me when I when I got my hair cut real yeah. short like this uh, and that's and you, it. And, and then you, you shear sh them the next time and, and the next the, time. And they grows back and yeah. you shear them again. Yeah. And they go on their merry way. But how the hell are you going to shear them a second time if you're beating shit out of them? And, I didn't know. And, and I didn't. Know, I mean, I didn't. I didn't think that they need to be tortured to, to shear them. They don't. Or any animal. Whatever they're doing, I don't know. And whatever God country it was in, or whatever. Well, I hope it's not America. Human race is uh, really uh, befitting uh, uh, to what it says in two Timothy in the Bible. It really coincides with two Timothy. It really. It's despicable how humans are getting. Back to Mr. Brown. Yeah. He was being held in the county jail on a 70,000 cash bond and could face more than 20 years in prison. The former Reno high school student also faces two counts of possession of a controlled substance, methamphetamine. No, here we go. So they're going to blame it on the drug, and the guy's going to get get a, a small sentence. Melissa Lubeck of Nevada Voters for Animals was among the protesters who turned out in front of the courthouse in hopes of making sure Brown doesn't get out of jail soon. Yeah. We want to make sure justice is served. Animals deserve better rights than they have. We don't want to get any plea deal. No, no. If five dogs tortured and, and killed? No, he should, he should be punished severely. Security was beefed up inside and outside the court complex. Citing concerns for Brown's safety, the county jail. Oh, like 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 we should care. Did not make public about the usual Brown information safety. Mm. about the status of an inmate. Oh, poor thing. Have to protect him. He is off our website for security reasons. Who's going to protect? Who protected those 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 five innocent animals? Six. 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 Who protected them? Court documents show that during Brown's interrogation, he acknowledged he bought a dog from Frank and that he was living alone in a motel. He initially said he entered the room two days earlier to find his gray dog dead in the bathroom. So he, he says he's innocent. He pleads innocent then. Washoe County Sheriff's Detective Joe Bowen wrote, Brown said the dog looked like it had been cut up. And he suspected a girl named Debbie did it. He later changed his account. Hmm. Bowen said Cheryl Bloom, a lifelong friend of Brown's and his family, who was interviewed by detectives the day of his arrest, said, Brown talked about having urges of rage. Oh, so take it out on, on innocent animals. Yeah, okay. The next day she said Brown told her he had killed his friend's dog. And it made him high. Sadism. He got a thrill out of it. Just like this, uh, there was a photo of a 
I don't, I don't know who she is exactly, but it's, it, it's this attractive blonde who's a uh, supposedly an MTV personality that that just allowed her puppy to starve to death. To death. And yeah, then you see all the ribs sticking out yeah. and everything, and yeah. her her photo is posted, which I'm very happy about, and her name. I just don't know who she is because I don't watch that station. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she she just allowed her puppy to starve. I think they. Well, I don't know if they, puppy. It, did the puppy die. I don't know. Uh, I I didn't uh, I didn't see that part. But it's but it might, no I no re, I mean allowing it means that they're feeling no remorse, no compassion for the animal. To Timothy. No empathy. Sociopath. Another sociopath. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, what do you call, um, um, no natural affection. Without that's natural true. affection. Uh, 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 a society that has, is growing colder and colder and colder. Um, well, there's no doubt about it that, you know, I mean, look, throughout history, Every time an, an, an evil dictator came about, they people always thought that that was the end times. But as far as to Timothy goes, it's it fits in perfectly with our time these days. It fits in perfectly. But uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I mean, a cute little adorable puppy. You 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 take the responsibility of getting a dog a pet and then you just decide not to feed it my question is why why get it number one number two why um starve it starve it why uh, why uh um just just leave it there with no source of food to, to yeah. start uh um it's like it's worse than abandoning it because if you abandon it, somebody might find it and and put it up for adoption or or take care of it themselves. If you abandon you know, you look it, at, but, but you they, look at that situation that you're talking about, and you look at the video that somebody put up there last night. I think it was Gary Null. It showed many many uh, instances of people saving the lives of dogs. Yes, and on cats. the highway, the dog was on. The dog was uh, near the divider, yeah, not the divider, that, I'm sorry. Well, well this yeah. Was, this was something entirely On the side different. of the highway, the, uh, the, the car pulled over, the dog was on the uh, side of the highway, abandoned? There was a black dog on an ice floe. Oh, really? Yeah. There was nothing else around but water. Nowhere for it to go. Yeah. And some guy went out, and he got him, brought him up onto the ship. Yeah. But but I've seen videos posted by Gary Null of abandoned, yeah. frightened dogs yeah. on a highway being rescued by people. Yeah, I, I saw that one you're talking about. The woman made it across the highway and uh, spoke to the dog. The dog was afraid, but she eventually sidled up to it and put the collar, uh, the leash on it, Bro and put it in and the back seat. Back. Brought it in the car. Brought it into her car. Yeah. Put her own life in jeopardy to do that, crossing a highway. You know? Yeah, she, I think she was parked on the shoulder of the road. Yeah. With her Kids were in the car or something. Well, well, there was another dog that was hers in the back seat. She put it in the back seat. Wow. And, you know, I mean, she rescued it. And uh, because, so, th you know, I mean, abandonment is horrible, but the animal might get rescued. But, but, if, but if the dog is living with a, with a, with a, with a wicked, sick bastard, and the dog is being starved in captivity. There's, there's no hope. There's no, there's, there's no There's nobody there to rescue the animal. There's no excuse for it. The pet. Mm. There's nobody there to rescue it. <coughs> Little change of pace. Okay. <coughs> My husband of 30 years had an affair. A year and a half ago, we struggled through the aftermath and are trying to restart our relationship. Dear Abby? Yeah. He remained in touch with the other woman until she finally pulled the plug on him.
and now he has no interest in talking with me about our relationship or how to improve it. He is distant and refuses to say I love you. He doesn't initiate hugging and kissing. He will initiate sex every so often. But I'm usually the one who seems to need more contact. Now, sometimes people grow apart because they, uh, it's their own fault. They take each other for granted or they stop trying, they stop contributing to the relationship. I'm talking about the women too, it's not all, always the men. When I question him, he tells me everything is all right. Monogamy takes work, you know, I mean. And I am making a mountain out of a molehill. We have good times. Yeah. But I really feel his lack of affection. And she blames him for it, I bet. I don't want to leave this man. I love him dearly. Go for counseling. And have for many years. Should I keep waiting for a renewal, or has my membership here lapsed and I'm just kidding myself? Well, so they should at least try to save it by seeking You know seeking, where she lives? Seeking counseling. You where? know where she lives? Alaska. <laughs> yeah, what, is, what do they say about Alaska? There's a shortage of women or men? To men. Men. Yes, women. To men. Women. Women well, to this men. guy had two of them. What the hell? Were they like, were they Inuits? Were they Eskimos or were they? Uh, we don't know. I mean, I don't know what kind of women they have. Well, I, I know they they have, Sarah Palin is from up there, but uh, in general, I don't know what kind of women reside in Alaska, but uh, there's not a lot of them. But dear Abby says, because you love him dearly, and don't want to leave him, stay put. However, everything is not all right. And you are not making a mountain out of a molehill. No. Your husband appears to be punishing you for something. And unless you get to the bottom of it, your relationship with him will remain icy cold. And maybe get it colder. A licensed marriage counselor may be able to help you rebuild your relationship. Like I said. But it won't happen unless he is willing to try. It takes two people to dance the tango. If he isn't, then you should go without him and let the therapist help you decide. If this is the way you want to live, rest of your life. Well, he's not hes not even sitting down with her and, and being honest. That's correct. And having a, a, a um, non-argumentative uh, discussion. You know, non-argumentative uh, powwow. A powwow. Yeah. Coming clean. Say, you know, uh, uh, either, either I'm doing these things, I'm behaving this way for this reason or that reason, or I don't know why I'm doing these things. You know, maybe he knows the reason and doesn't want to tell her. So, but they got to do something, yeah. All right, Chief, what do you got? We got more dogs. Uh, a dog's abused? This is a dog day. Abused dogs or something else? When Shetland Sheepdog Maggie comes home from the groomer, her owners praise and pet her shiny coat, much to the chagrin of Pitbull Stormy, who will headbutt her until family cuts out the compliments. Oh, jealous. Stormy's jealous? Said owner Amy Putnam. Better watch out, Stormy. Don't lock onto the... the Sheep, Shetland sheep dog. You know how you're supposed to treat your kids the same? Well, that goes for dogs too. They get along great. 
Go with the flow. Oh, they're not including Stormy. Until one thinks he's being slighted. Maybe they're not including Stormy with the, in the affection. They have to be inclusive of Stormy. Yeah, you don't do that. Nah, you know, Stormy's probably uh, feels unwanted or something. After hearing stories like Putnam's, a psychology professor decided to study for the first time whether the human emotion of jealousy really happens in dogs. Sure it does. The nine-month study published in July in the science journal PLOS One hints that it could be possible. But other experts are not so sure that it's jealousy. While I will not say that dogs do not experience jealousy, this article does not prove that they actually do. Dr. Bonnie Beaver also insists dogs <laughs> lack shame. <laughs> Dr. Bonnie Beaver? <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. Without me commenting, what a joke. I have to ring the levity bills. Bonnie Beaver. <laughs> I hope she doesn't have buck teeth. <laughs> Despite what people think, or Harry Bush, the guilty look, head coward, ears back, eyes droopy, he's a reaction to people throwing tantrums over chewed up shoes and accidents on the carpet, she said. But Christine Harris, a professor of psychology at the University of California, San Diego, says her dog, study, supports the theory that there's a more basic form of jealousy. She and a former student worked with 36 dogs, videotaping owners ignoring their pets while petting and talking sweetly to stuffed animated dogs or jack-o'-lantern pals. <laughs> a pair of independent workers watched the videos for behavior like aggression or attention-seeking. My, my cat, Dead Teddy, is very jealous. Yeah, apparently, sure, you've told me stories about very jealous. him. Um, yeah, but he's, Teddy is, um, yes, extremely jealous. He's got to be the, uh, the center of attention. When people interacted with the stuffed animals, their dogs, pushed or touched them 78% of the time, tried to get in between the owner and the toy, <laughs> and snapped at the fake dog. Uh. <laughs> there was much less of that behavior when it came to the toy pails. 42% of the dogs tried to push or touch them. 15% tried to get between them. And 1% snapped. Dr. Harris believes the dogs saw the stuffed animals as rivals. When they see a loved one show affection toward another, what appears to be a real being, they engaged in real behaviors to try and draw the affection back to them. Mm -hmm. That's what you see in humans, too. Dr. Beaver said, the study opens up thoughts about what an animal might be experiencing, but she's concerned about calling it jealousy. A dog might be more interested because another social being is interacting with the owner. Dr. Harris said she is not claiming a dog's internal experience mirrors that of humans because it's impossible to know. Some say that's not jealous behavior, that dogs don't have emotions like this. Others have said, I'm being too cautious. And if they have emotions like us, they will have behavior like us. Yeah. Well, uh, when a dog is welcomed into a human family, it becomes part of the pack. And you become the uh, alpha, hopefully. And 
uh, you know, if, if, if there's no other dogs around, especially if it's a it's a lone pet dog, they uh, will associate themselves more with humans than dogs. That's that's what parrots do. You know, yeah. that's how they become tame. And that's how they get attached to you for their 60 years. Sometimes more, 75 uh, parrots, but, and they're very intelligent. And uh, well, if a, if a person gets one African gray parrot, which is the best talker, okay, they become very attached to you. Yeah. If you get two African gray parrots, then the parrot, the parrots associate themselves with being a parrot because they they interact with each other and then that's when they get nasty towards humans when they don't want to be bothered mm -hmm. they'll lash out and bite you because they they differentiate themselves they now they have a, a, a buddy, buddy and they and they know their identity <laughs> you know that's what I hear happens but anyway after their 2012 election loss, a more appealing Republican Party was supposed to emerge. <laughs> Republican Governor Bobby Jindal of Louisiana stressed that the party had to stop being the stupid one. No, now they're just the mean, cruel one. Let's look at the progress. While extremely concerned about wasting taxpayers' money, it did not prevent the GOP hardliners from initiating a government shutdown last year. They're so worried about the taxpayers' money that they give trillions of it away to corporations. And that cost the U.S. economy billions of dollars. Mm. Then, Republicans tinkered with the debt ceiling. Fortunately, common sense prevailed and a disaster was avoided. What they were doing was spiting President Barack Obama. Next was the Benghazi tragedy. They don't want the black man in the White House. Yeah. Which the GOP hoped to exploit. Trying to convince voters that this incident trumped the Watergate scandal. It didn't work. Now the right is about to start a lawsuit against the president. The exact reasons as to why we apparently will not find out as we move along. I would just tell them, you know, guess what guys? The tax burden is being shifted back to the rich. I don't want to hear anything about it. Shut your mouths and pay your fucking taxes. Shut your Who's fucking. Who's gonna say that? Shut the fuck up. Well, I, I would say it to them. Pay your taxes. They make and shut the laws. The fuck up. You know what they'll say to you? What? Back off, James. You can do nothing. Are you talking about the Republican Congress? Correct. Because because they have the votes. That's correct. And there's no filibuster. They are the legislature. And no filibustering can take place. You know. Filibustering takes place in the uh, Senate, and well, it can take place well, you know, on Senate, anything that is not a money bill. The Senate have, has been uh, uh, voting unanimously on some very unpopular... 41 Republicans. Very unpopular things Correct. that, uh, that would have recently happened. Well, they always do that. That's the filibuster. They don't have to actually do it. They just say, hey, we're going to filibuster. And you don't have 60 votes to override it. So you, you need 60 to That's override right. a filibuster. That's correct. And if you don't have 60, you can't override a filibuster. You can do nothing. You are stuck. And that's right. where we are. So you just need at least 60, 60 votes. The Republicans own the House. And they also stymie the Senate. They have the... The, the Democrats do not have enough votes in the Senate. They, there are, there are the not house. enough. Or in the House. Well, that's obvious. Yeah. But the House. Interesting. And while at it, why not commit more precious time and resources to add impeachment proceedings? 
knowing very well that to succeed, a two-thirds majority in the Senate is needed, which is not likely. Okay. With few exceptions, the GOP still denies climate change. <laughs> Oh gosh. Or the existence of hunger and poverty. And 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 what were you saying? The the governor of Louisiana wants Republicans to stop being a stupid stop party. Being stupid the stupid party. <laughs> and the presence of a crumbling infrastructure. Oh yeah. You don't believe in any of that, okay? No. The party is obviously committed to do anything but solve the nation's problems. No, they're just committed to giving all your tax money to the rich. Jindal's warning seems to be lost as indicated by the above actions. But if the people who keep voting for it do not recognize that they are the stupid party, what good is it? Well, the proof is in the pudding. If you say to whom? if you say stupid things, then you are the stupid one in the stupid party. But if the people who vote for them don't recognize that they're stupid, so if they're stupider, if they're just as stupid, if not, if they're just as dumb and dumber dumb than and dumber. the than the uh, Republican politician, then they don't see how stupid their candidate is. Or if they're suckers that don't have a pot to piss in, and they they, they re-elect the same Republican because they will never vote for a red Democrat because the the cult the cult following morons believe in things like a fertilized egg is a human being and all this bullshit. They believe in a Christianity that is not biblical. Yeah, a bigoted, also, and yet racist what, Christianity. And yet, what do they do? They carry the Bible around with them. Hey, doesn't the ever popular, uh, what we talked about last Saturday, the ever popular right wing pastor in, in, uh, in a, Mr. Haggy, Mr. John Haggy in, in a Baptist church in Texas, feel that the, the poor should not get food stamps or welfare, they should just die of starvation? That's a nice Christian for you, and he's yes, a pastor. Yes, wow, yes, yes. you know, or or many many uh, um, right wing churches uh, throughout the country. The the one in Kentucky refuses to marry uh, interracial couples. And what do you think the uh, the uh, prosperity preachers are all about? Well, if they're preaching prosperity, it means that those who prosper are blessed by God. So what are the poor then? Not blessed. Cursed by God? I, I oh. wouldn't blame God. I would blame the capitalistic system. Well, I would ask Joel Osteen, sitting in his his great mansion, uh, what do you do? You ever take any of your donations or any of your church's donations and help the poor with that money? Uh, was it you that told me that that Joel Osteen does not have control over? the donations that he gets there's another body of uh, there's another group of people running the actual church usually is it's usually run by a committee a committee usually well I wonder if the committee donates any of that money to uh, they usually the have some sort of you know poverty thingy that they push out there to earn more money well you know the, I'm well, Pat Robertson has his African take care of the little kitty thingy. Well, yeah, well, well Joe Osteen yeah. obviously got the money from somewhere to buy his uh, huge mansion. That's church money. That's church money. Not his mansion. They throw him out of the church tomorrow, he loses the mansion. Oh, so the committee could, could, uh, could vote. To, they could say, well, you know what? We don't like don't this. Want to we don't like this Joe Olstein anymore. Yeah. If it's run by a committee, they can do that. Right, and vote him out. They tried to the Worldwide Church of God tried try to uh, institute such a uh, uh, a program and get rid of Herbert W. Armstrong. 
So in other words, the evangelist that does TV shows is, is like a, a puppet of the of people behind him, backing him up. Like the TV show, it, He's, yeah. However, he's, he's a performer. He's a he's a performer representing a bigger. He's charismatic. Comedian. He brings in the money. Right. Brings in the money. People, people uh, or suckers uh, uh, love him. They love the evangelist. They 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 because he's they like his personality. Yeah. He has charisma. Like a lot of women say, they bought Joel Osteen's book because oh what a wonderful positive smile. Oh. He has this big positive smile on his face all the time and 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 they like they like feel good people they like people that make them feel good preach on to me only good things yeah they want to feel good they don't want to hear the real truth they want to feel good Herbert W Armstrong in his, uh, his autobiography tells the story of a couple yeah who were seeking God they were really seeking God and they belong to a uh, Pentecostal church. Yeah. And, you know, Herbert, of course, explained the whole situation to uh -huh. them and everything. And they were, they were sick or something, and uh, they were healed. And, mm -hmm. and they went back to their Pentecostal church. And that was their excuse when Herbert came around to find out how they were doing or yeah. whatever. We feel good. We feel good at that church. Yeah. Well, they also, a lot of people are lazy. Instead of opening up the Bible and reading it, they'd rather listen to their pastor, sit on their, their asses and listen to the pastor. And the pastor could be very wrong, like John Hagee or Hagee. Yes, and it's, it, it's for certain that they are very wrong because the Bible is not, is not open to everyone just reading it and, and being able to understand it. It's not. As the parables show, God does not want certain people to know certain stuff. But there are many portions of the Bible that are plain, simple, and in your face. They they must be interpreted by the prophet. Yeah. And then you go to the Bible and say, "Oh my God, that it, it's exactly right." Yeah. But you didn't see it before, and you wouldn't see it without the revealer. Yeah. Like if you read to Timothy, it's pretty. It's pretty self-explanatory when you read. Right, but the, you have to, you have yeah. to understand to Timothy in a time period, in a certain time period, which is now, yeah, in the end time, before the tribulation, before the second coming. See, it didn't happen in ancient Israel. Yeah, it's a recent. Isn't it funny? Phenomenon. Isn't it funny how? how biblical verses uh, that are directed towards the end time are in much earlier books and not all jammed into Revelation. They Isn't are in it? Daniel, they are in all, they are in Isaiah, they are in Ezekiel. Chron are chronologic, all. chronological That is why order. when you study the Bible, you open up your concordance and you look for everything under the, one thing. With the, the concordance. If you are looking for, let's say, end time, then you would find everything on end time and you would find out where to look. Then you go look. Well, you so, see what Ezekiel, Isaiah, uh, Daniel. So uh, that's, that's why it's important to have a concordance. As that's a, why you can't read the Bible from beginning to end yeah. and hope to understand. Yeah. And the King James, of course, King yeah. James Version. Uh, all right, so uh, that wraps it up. What a wrap! What do you think? It's a wrap, It's right? a wrap! It's a wrap. And that ain't to eat. Speaking either. of wraps, I picked up some corn tortillas uh, from the ethnic market, and I keep them in the freezer. You know, they're very easy to separate uh, with a knife. And I use them as bread. You know, you can use them uh, with a hamburger, you can use them with a hot dog, you can use them whatever. But the corn tortillas are only this big, and the flour tortillas are the big ones that you can make an entire sandwich out of it and, and wrap it right up. I wish they made the corn tortillas large, like the flour ones. Then they would be very versatile. You know, you would have your small ones and your big ones. 
to make a sandwich because it tastes very good. The corn ones. You know, speaking of the word rap, you know, I hate rap music, but uh, I like wrapped up food, you know, Mexican food, mm -hmm. sandwich wraps, you know. Anyway, a breakfast burrito can be made at home. Mm -hmm. You know, put ham or whatever, sausage, or whatever yours in your omelet, your eggs, all the spices and everything, and just wrap it up in a tortilla. But anyway, I digress. Like Taz says on TNA Wrestling. I you digress to the end time. I digress. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. And we'll catch you next week. Have a, a safe, uh, I guess you would call it end of summer weekend? Or, uh, or not quite? Almost. Middle, middle of summer almost. weekend. Bye bye. Almost. Say so long to these so people. So long, people. This has been a Megalife 21 production.